Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set up for the first time and do an unboxing on this iRobot Roomba. So I've taken everything out of the box. First, I'm gonna show you how to kind of put it all together. We're gonna to download the iRobot Home app on my iPhone. Then we're gonna set it up and connect it to the Wi-Fi. So here's everything that comes in the box. Let's take a look at the robot. Let's make sure we don't have any plastic on the sensor or the eye up here. Let's turn it over. So on the bottom, this is what it should look like. You've got one brush, you've got these wheels. You got these rollers for picking up. You're gonna, this little green thing, move that. This lifts up. And then these two rollers are for the carpet. And there's kind of a diagram, kind of a dark green and a light green. And that in goes in first. So these should be installed properly, but if they're not. So first you put the dark green one in, then the light green one. Then this thing slides down and stops. Make sure the wheel's clean. There's your charging ports. Your wheels are free. So on the back side here, you're gonna press this button and this releases the chamber where all the dirt and debris is gonna go. We do have a filter. We do have an extra paper filter that goes in there. We don't wanna get those wet. That's a paper filter. Now on the bottom of this, this is a flap. So make sure that flap is right there. That's, a, that's gonna open up whenever the, it's gonna suck out the debris inside there. So if we look at the front here, press this button here and this slides out so we can see inside there. Make sure that's all. Then this is kind of hinged. You're going to put this left side in first, put it in until it snaps. So we do have a power cord. We're going to plug the power cord into the base unit. So here's the base unit. We got this leather uh, strap here. You're just going to lift it up. This is where the extra bags are stored. There's a little spot for it to store right there. And this is where the bag goes that's going to collect all the debris out of the robot. You're simply, it's got a little track that it slides in right there. Again, this comes like this. You're going to put it in in that little track. So you can see the bag just slides down in that little track. Now make sure after the bag is in, don't lift this up. You lift this, this little tab here, you're going to lift up whenever the bag is full of dirt and debris so that when you lift that up, it closes off that opening right there. But we don't want that closed off right now. So put it in there until it's kind of snapped in, kind of open the bag up a little bit, and then you can close the lid. Okay, so around back, you do have some cord storage. This is where you're going to plug in the cord. Here's what the bottom of it looks like. So it does say it's 100 to 127 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, 12 amps, 18 volts, 1.25 amps out to the robot. So when you plug it in, it will only go one way. Then you can wrap the cord around this and then it can come out either side, right here or here, depending on where the plug is. Okay, so it does say, talk about positioning the charging station. Make sure it's not too close to stairs. You got some room in front of it and to the side of it. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. It's only, it's only a two-prong plug. I did see a light right here come on, but there is no power switch. Now, the way you put the robot on, and again, there is no power switch on the robot. You're simply, it's gonna wake up whenever we put it on this base unit. Make sure the base unit's plugged in, but this, this eye right here, we're gonna point that towards the charging station. And there's a little groove here for the wheels. That's where it's gonna be sucking out all the debris. And so as the vacuum fills up, it's gonna come over here, and this is gonna open up and suck all the debris out of here. Okay, so let's put it on the base unit. As soon as I did, that light right there comes on and that light is on steady. There's kind of what it looks like. Okay, so you wanna install the iRobot Home. Now you do have to create an account. It'll ask for your email. It's gonna send a code to your email. Then you gotta enter that code in on your app and then you can use it. Okay, so it says it's searching for products. And then I clicked on that top one, and this is the J series. So I'm gonna click on the J series. Okay, so it's it's plugged in. I'm gonna need my Wi-Fi password, say get started. Place it on there, it talks about that illuminating. Okay, so it found a Wi-Fi, but I don't want it to use that one. Change Wi-Fi, I want it to use a different Wi-Fi. I want it to use, I want it to use Ginkgo Tree. Okay, now I gotta pick this, press that little back button there. Okay, so, so now I go back to the app, now it's Ginkgo Tree. Now my robot did kind of make a noise. I'm gonna hit yes, continue. I've gotta enter in the Wi-Fi for the, or the password for my Wi-Fi network. Okay, so when I was, I hit done, and then you gotta hit continue at the bottom. Okay, so it says it's connecting to the robot. Now again, the robot did make a noise, and there is the red light flashing on the robot now. 
So it says, press your robot's button to connect to the phone. So I got to press this. Looks like it's verifying the password. So that took a minute to verify the password. Now it's establishing cloud connection. Even though that's still red, it looks like the app is still working on it. Okay, looks like it's connected now. Your robot was successfully connected. Even though it's flashing red, let's hit continue. Give it a name. I'm just gonna leave it Roomba, hit continue. It says setup is complete. Okay, so welcome to the world of Roomba, hit next. Even though my Roomba, the red light is still on. So this has got a bunch of displays that's gonna walk us so on. I've been hitting the next button a bunch. So it asks me, do I wanna opt in for optical image review? I'm gonna go ahead and opt in. So I think why mine is flashing, it says it's unable to start, Roomba's battery is too low. So I think that's why it's flashing red. Okay, so I'm gonna let it charge. I'm gonna kind of remove everything. I'm gonna kind of make sure the floor is clean. I'm gonna open up the doors, pick things up off the floor, and then we're gonna, it's probably gonna have to map your house. Okay, so my Roomba's got enough charge now. You're gonna simply either hit the clean button, you can just press that one time and it'll start cleaning, or you can tell it to clean everywhere. Now it's gonna have to vacuum our house twice in order for you to get a map. Once it's vacuumed your house twice, it's gonna come up with a map and it's gonna allow you to edit it. Now some pointers that says, kind of pick things up in your house that normally aren't on the ground, but also turn your lights on. That's gonna help with the initial mapping. Now you don't have to have your lights on every time it runs, but it does help with the first initial mapping. Okay, I'm simply gonna press my clean button on the robot and it's gonna clean and I'm gonna have it clean tomorrow also. Okay, so it's been vacuuming my house. It's gonna come back. It's coming back to the base station. It's picked up a bunch of stuff. Now it's gonna suck it out from the base unit. Now the base unit is kind of loud when it sucks all the debris out. Okay. Okay, so it's done and you'll see in the app, it says saving smart map. Okay, so it's been a couple days. You can go now, you, now you can go in and hit the map button. It's gonna have a map and I'm gonna show you how to make the different rooms and no-go places and clean places. So I labeled mine the main floor. Now here it is. Now it also tells you where the, it found the carpet. So you'll see it's kind of like the squiggly lines. That's the carpet, there's the my linoleum. Now yours won't have a bunch of these red, these are no-go zones that have been added, but you're gonna go to room dividers first. So hit room dividers. Now that's how you make a room. You don't make a room by drawing a square or something, but you're gonna put the room divider and that's gonna, then you're gonna, it's gonna create a room. So, and you can delete room dividers. So like say I wanna combine this room, I can delete that room divider, then it automatically combines it with the hallway there, but I'm not gonna delete it. Now. It's a little tricky with these room dividers. It's a, you know, you, it, you got to make sure the green light or the green line is right there. I can, it, tw it twists and turns. So it, you got a lot of control over them. The divider stays there and you move the map around the divider. Now I want that to be right in the doorway. I got to move it right there. And then I'm going to hit save. Yes. Okay, so once it saves, it kind of goes back to the standard I can add a divider. So say there was, it's going to auto, the Roomba will auto add some dividers that it thinks the different rooms are at, but you can just add a divider yourself and then you can click on the room. It'll just say room, click on it and give it a name. 
And you may have to hit the back button. I've noticed sometimes when you're in the map, there is no like back in the map. You've got to use your phone or your tablet's back button. So we can go to room labels. Here's the different, I can change the different rooms, kind of label what it is. Okay, so again, I hit the back button. Go to the zones, let's go to the zones. Now there's, these are no-go zones. The nice thing about this Roomba is, as it vacuums, mine's been vacuuming for a couple days, it's gonna give you recommendations for no-go zones. So, and then you just hit accept and then it adds the little recommendation there. So that's a very nice feature. But you can add them, they're called keep out zones down here. You know, and then you can drag this around. So say you've got like a, a Christmas tree or something, you don't want it to go around, you put it here and then you just hit save. And then it'll kind of red out that area that it, the Roomba won't go. Yeah, the no-go zones or the, the keep out zones are gonna be very important. That's gonna really help your Roomba kind of stay away from things that may normally be on the ground that it could get caught in. Now you also can, you can give it clean zones. So there's the clean zones. These are kind of like areas where you want extra cleaning to take place. So say I had a, I got a dog in this area right here. So I put kind of a pet bed and that's gonna do some extra cleaning around that pet bed. Then again, when you're kind of back to this main page of the map, I have to hit the back button on, my, on the thing I'm using. Now I can hit the back button up here. So some important things. So putting this Roomba on a schedule is very important. These things work the best. They don't necessarily deep clean. Like you can't like, don't use it for a couple weeks and then expect it to deep clean. These things work the best when they're kind of continuously cleaning. That's what works the best. Something you're really gonna uh, like is the history. It's gonna show you where it vacuumed. It's gonna kind of show you what obstacles it found because it does have a camera on the front that does take a pictures of things it runs into. And that's where you can add the go-no zones. We got product health. This is a very neat feature. Um, it talks about the filter, the onboard filter, how many hours are left, sweeping brushes, how many hours are left. So that's a very nice feature. And then you can add different favorites. So I've got a favorite where just the, I want, when I want to hit, when I want to just clean the family room, it's a one button press, or I can clean everywhere. I just press that button right there. If I want to start a new job, I can select different rooms. Say, oh, so I want to do just the bedrooms today. New job, select the bedrooms and hit start cleaning. So I hope this video helps as far as setting it up and everything. I really do like this Roomba vacuum cleaner. Thanks everybody for watching.